Hello. Life is easier at the moment. The sun's shining, the wind's not blowing. I put on a summer shirt, uh, and I, I don't think I'm in a big rush. Uh, this is my 27th day that I've been doing this, first video. Possibly only one today. I'll, I'll watch the clock a little bit. Anyway, backing up, uh, under archetypes, I forgot to mention Monster. Monster is an archetype, I feel, present in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, the example, e.g., it means, for example, my dear friend, uh, whom I call Shirley, I was talking to her this morning and, and she didn't know about e.g., exemplum gratis, I use it all the time. Uh, it means, for example, well, Bull of Heaven, uh, is a monster, huge, uh, killed a hundred men at a blast from his nostrils, monsters. Uh, you could maybe regard Humbaba as a monster, but I think it's better to think of Humbaba as a guardian. I think it's more useful. Uh, Godzilla, you know, this is, I'm back to the point where I say, all right, kids, name your favorite monsters. Uh, big, scary, they kill you. Uh, Godzilla, King Kong, although King Kong's complicated, he's complex. That, that's beauty and the beast in a way hidden in there. That, that, that's a more complicated thing, but people think of him. Them. Uh, that's a movie that my son laughs at me when I talk about it. It scared me so bad as a kid, and I never forgot it. It was about monstrous ants that were taking over the, the world. It was awful. But anyway, and there are lots of other ones. Anyway, that, that was backtracking. That was archetypes, uh, and I hope you add it to your notes. What I want to do today is talk about a very, very special genre. So genres, I think that's 3.1 or 2 point now, I don't know which page you're on, I think it's the third section, epic. Uh, all the way over to the left, you could skip a line, I don't remember what the last genre was, it might have been spoof, I don't know. Uh, skip a line, and then go all the way over to the left and write down epic. Now people will talk about, oh, that's an epic movie, or something like that. That's not the way I'm using it. When I use the word epic, well, let me also say that I don't mean E-P-O-Q-U-E, -E, epoch, uh, or epic. Uh, that means a period of time. No, that's not what I mean. An epic is a, a very long, uh, really you should put in here very, a very long sung poem about the deeds uh, of, of heroes. Very long. Uh, in, the, in the case of uh, Homer's Iliad, it's about 500 pages long. His Odyssey is also, when it's, if, it's, if it's written out, or when it was written out, 500 pages, very long. Do not confuse it with a song or some cute little poem, or, or wonderful little poem. No, an epic is something different, uh, lofty in its seriousness. Um, examples of an epic are, are Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is the old, world's oldest known story. It is also an epic. It was originally sung, it was performed, it was sung, uh, eventually it was written down. Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, those are the two most famous examples of epics, I would say. Beowulf, a wonderful epic of coming from the land of the Vikings. Later on I'll, I'll talk more about the, the recent, fairly recent film version that was made of Beowulf. El Cid is a Spanish epic, probably I should have SP in here. Spanish. Uh, it is the epic of the Spanish people. Beowulf, incidentally, is the epic of the English language. Uh, the Song of Roland is the epic of the French uh, language. There goes a tractor. That's what you're hearing. I, I, in a way, I like this, that this is so open that you know if a tractor goes by. Uh, well, anyway, those are examples. Oh, and I say a very long sung poem about the deeds of heroes, i.e. That means that is. You should, I hope, you get real comfortable with these Latin abbreviations. It's a real quick way to say that is. These come from what's called the oral tradition. Now, I, how, to, how to be brief about what I've got to say about the oral tradition and epics. Let me back up to the point where I was at Harvard. I was miserable. I wanted to be a farmer, and there I was at Harvard. Uh, but I think I told you at the beginning of this series of classes, this course, that, that I got a good education. That I cannot deny. Uh, I was just misplaced. Well, <clears throat> part of my good education, I found nooks and crannies there 
that were very, very interesting. And I took a course, I, I don't know what the name of the course was exactly, I think it might have been called the Oral Tradition. That was where I discovered about epics. Maybe I would have known about them otherwise, but this was a half-year course uh, by the authority in the field. That's one of the things you had at Harvard. You had authorities in the field. Uh, the, the word, the name Alfred Lord comes to mind. I, I don't know. He might have been the predecessor. But anyway, at that time, Harvard was, at least in the United States, the cut, at the cutting edge of the study of the oral tradition. And there's where I learned how significant the oral tradition uh, truly was. I was remembering back, and I think I actually got a D, my, or a, a, a D in that course. Oh, it was a bad grade. And it was, I was so sorry about that because I loved the course and I thought I'd done real well on the final. But there were three questions and I didn't, for some reason, I didn't answer the third. I, I, I didn't notice it or something. And I was kind of put out because I, I learned so much in that course. Anyway, the oral tradition deals with when literature was carried before writing. Uh, Singers of Tales, that was one of the textbooks, or maybe the textbook that we had called Singers of Tales. Singers of Tales were those epic uh, poets who could sing these stories. Homer, the most famous of them all. They were illiterate, uh, uh, and yet, well, when, when we get to Homer, I'm going to have a whole lot more to say about this, but I don't want to pass up this opportunity. Uh, epics are very special. The world has only got a certain number of them. They, let's say, they don't make them anymore. Uh, for some reason, once uh, a society becomes literate, epics die out. Uh, we, we write things down. We write books. We write huge books like Tolstoy's War and Peace. Huge stories. Epic in their dimension, but not epic in their style. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I could go on about this. I, I probably shouldn't. Uh, it, it, uh, it, it influenced me, though, that I had discovered epics. Uh, I'm not, I'm a slow reader. I always have been. That was a, one of the problems I had when I was at Harvard. I was a slow reader. Uh, they, they actually tried to cure me of it to some extent, but I don't like to read fast. I like to read slow. Well, the, the oral tradition comes from oral. You don't read things, you hear them. People perform them. Maybe that's why I like Shakespeare so much. I don't know. Um, uh, but anyway, there I found that there was, or still is this vast uh, amount of literature that was never written down, not meant to be written down, it was performed. Uh, I'll, again, I'll tell you more about this later, but just in case I don't mention it at that time, after I left Brazil, I went into the Peace Corps, I was in, uh, after I left uh, college, Harvard, I went into the Peace Corps, I was in Brazil, and there, you know, within a, a year of the time I was at Harvard, I ran into the oral tradition. Brazilian cowboys, illiterate, after a rodeo, they, were, uh, they would gather and they would sing and they would do this. They, they were not singing from memory. They sang songs, very, very long songs that they knew. They were called hepentistas. Uh, and I was so, I thought, I, I guess I never did contact my former professor, but I thought, I bet he doesn't know. I wonder if they realize that this is going on here. They knew about Hungary and um, what was still alive there. Well, I better leave this subject. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow is going to be different. I'm going to keep you guessing, I guess, uh, with this course. Not intentionally, but tomorrow we're going to suddenly take a, 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 a sharp turn in a different direction. I hope to see you tomorrow.